keep having these moments where we're cruising along and I can't believe we're doing this trip. I mean, never in my life would I said, I'm gonna take two week holiday and take the intercoastal um, riverway and waterway and go you know, through South Carolina, North Carolina and Virginia. When would you ever even think of doing that? A lot of people do, I guess, but for me, never. And you talk to other people, you know, and they, for me, it's like living in Canada and you drive through from British Columbia into Alberta and you go through Banff and Jasper, it's all of it just amazing. And then you, you tell people about it, they're like, well, have you ever done it by train? And by train, it's, you see so much more and you see just such a different route and it's, it's amazing. And uh, that, that's how this goes. It's, you know, you're, you're treated by dolphins and shrimp boats and you see country that you never ever would see unless you were transiting this trip it blows my mind absolutely blows my mind if if i could give anyone any advice it would be like rent a boat and do this it's so wicked unbelievable it's crazy i, I keep having these moments where i'm just mind blown Hi, we're Josh and Tamara, and this is our 46-foot hunter sailboat, Honey Time. We've now made it into North Carolina. Join us every Friday as we learn to navigate these new waters and refit, renovate, and restore our new home. Thanks for all your support along the way. Look at this gorgeous water. Oh my God, it's awesome. Coming up on this cool looking old marina and it's kind of a it's a fuel stop for all the shrimp boats and there's one here right now and they are so cool looking it's like horse go <laughs> and uh but this is a neat little spot i read in the guide here on on our ipad that uh you can pop in here and stay fairly affordably uh not too much for amenities but they have really really good seafood in it and at like half price so i don't think we'll be stopping but it looks cool and check out the shrimp boat it's funny, it's kind of nice being back into the channel again after being out in the wide open. We got back into it and I'm like, oh, it's time for our Huck Finn moments again because you've got the trees around you and all the wildlife and all that kind of stuff. And don't get me wrong, being out in the open sound was awesome, but this is something special too. Let's see if these guys will give us a wee show. There's a whole bunch of dolphins. We haven't seen dolphins in a little bit now, so it's kind of nice to see them again. There they are. Oh, look at them all. We got a tail smack. Another thing we've seen a ton of today are jellyfish. The water here is infested with jellyfish, all different kinds there. They're a bit creepy and neat to see from above. I wouldn't want to be in the water. I just had a quick shower on the transom. It's hot oh, and there's no wind, but look at how cool this is. She's some flat seas right now. Hot, hot. It's cool though, it's so calm and flat. You can look down in the water and there's millions of jellyfish. So we've been just watching these, looking for the big ones, going, oh, there's a little, little one, ah, big one. So it's awesome to see them go by. <sighs> what a day. Oh my goodness, we did over 60 nautical miles today in great big water, as you saw. It was such an awesome day having the autopilot work for us all day long and it was kind of like just sitting back and relax and just setting the waypoints as we went it was really easy but super progressive day today which is awesome and we are anchored for the evening in this beautiful spot i think this is the biggest water that we've been anchored in yet and it was a quick and easy anchorage it stuck right away everything went really really good our anchor alarm is on and now it's just time to sit and relax, make some dinner, enjoy the beautiful sunset that's going to happen and call it a day. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. We uh, 
just got off anchor and decided to get at it early today. Have, and have coffee on the go. Have coffee on the go. It was a bit of a windy night. You can't tell now because it's the the water state is calm, but we got We're rocked right. all night it's long. It's calm now. It, it blew all night long. Yeah. Lullaby. Lullaby all night. But yeah, it was a as a bit of an interesting morning so far. Yeah, we just got <laughs> out and uh, the little spot we were anchored out in there, there was tons and tons of crab pots. So I was kind of just dodging them as we were heading back out to get back onto the snail trail. The, what do they call it? The ditch? The ICW? And uh, I just, on the cartography on the map, I just cut across this one spot where it was shallower and it shows 5'9 and we ran aground. <laughs> and, and we were in three feet of water. We just stopped us dead. Goosh. <laughs> we're like, oh my god, crab pot. Yeah, I thought it was a crab pot for sure. And I looked at the at the depth and we're at three and a half feet. And I'm like, oh. But full stop, reverse, backed out of there and we're gone. And then this big looper boat went by and threw this big, huge wake as we were going across. And it picked us up and dropped us on bottom and picked us up, and dropped us on bottom. None of them were hard impacts by any means. It's very soft, soft mud here. But uh, nonetheless, reminder just to really pay attention. <laughs> so They tell you to stay on Bob's tracks for a reason. So we're staying on Bob's tracks. We, yeah. we got a little liberal, I guess, yesterday and being such deep water and we could kind of meander a little bit where we wanted to, cut yeah, off some of the corners and stuff like that. But right this is shallow. Is, uh, a foot that yeah. you would not know. So we're at medium tide and we have a 64-ish foot bridge coming up. So this is the first one that's been lower than a 65. Um, we should be just fine uh, going under it, but you never know when it's another foot lower, it gets scary again. So now we're stressing, but it should be okay. Last night was super cool. Oh my God, the moon is like a tiniest crescent. What is it called when it's just, I think it's a waxing moon. Um, and it was just the tiniest little sliver and it was beautiful pink in color. We couldn't get a picture of it. Unfortunately, we need to get a better camera. But that made the, um, the stars absolutely gorgeous. Around three o'clock last night, we came up to do kind of like a spot check and you could see the Milky Way so perfectly. And then the bioluminescence that were in the water, oh my God, it was so pretty. Definitely a bonus of uh, being out here in the middle of nowhere with no light pollution anywhere whatsoever. The stars are epic. This is stated as a 64 foot bridge, but the water's reading lower than that. So we're not sure if we trust the water markers. Low and steady here in case we have to back on out. But we're looking pretty good here. All good. Antenna's clear. Stress and worry for nothing. We named our autopilot Kevin. Because he saved our bacon yesterday. <laughs> and when it screws up, we can go, come on! <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're going up this fairly narrow cut here, and it's super long if you look down here. It's all day. All day we're on this ditch. And um, I was just testing to see if Kevin could keep us on track and it can but there's we got a just over knot like a knot and a half current coming at us and it makes us wander a bit so he's working overtime trying to keep it straight and uh, I think when the, when the tide switches in the next couple hours here we should get that knot and a half current going the outflow which will help us we'll burn less fuel and we'll go a little bit quicker but it will also help Kevin do a better job so yes. for now Easier Kevin, steering. I have this one I have the help. This girl's gonna need a bath when she gets there. See that deadhead? So 
We've now gone from crab pots to deadheads. The entire river is just loaded with them. And uh, personally, I think I prefer the crab pots over the deadheads because you really don't know how far they're coming in or if there's some just under the water line where the crab pots, you can see them. They're always marked, they're above the water and it's good to go. So this is a little bit nerve wracking to make sure you stay right in the dredge mark. But apparently we're going to be dealing with deadheads all the way up, even into the Virginia cut. So <clears throat> time to keep your head on a swivel and make sure you stay on that line. Look at the water in here. It looks like coffee right now. Well, we finally got into the open water of the Alligator River. That was a, a bit of a nightmare going through that little cut. We got run aground two more times from boats passing us really quickly in their wake no, pushing us like off the big mover boats probably 20 of them oh it was crazy yeah, and more. a lot of them they just didn't care they just kind of full speed ahead and came right on through and and there was deadheads everywhere it sucked so it's nice to be in the big water again and uh we are enjoying it we're giving kevin another go here he's uh he's kind of getting his shit together now so that's nice yeah. And uh, it's kind of cool though. We're getting closer to the uh, military bases. So we just heard what, five uh, fighter jets go by? Which was kind of neat too. Looked like they, rather than just shooting in a straight line, they were like, just kind of yeah. like yeah. doing so their cool. thing. Yeah. But, anyways, as you can see, we've come from back in the cut back there. And now we are, sorry, all the pictures are right from the cockpit here. Just go in circles back and forth. There's not much to see, but this is what it is. So we're just about to get into the real open water here and we'll turn and make our way up to Admiral Town. That is hot. Hot and big bucks. Big, big bucks. because we're motoring that way. This is an option. It's working. Bugs. And there's bugs. And this guy's been hanging around here all day. Look at this. Oh, spooked him. He keeps moving spots. And this is his girlfriend right here. Their wings are so cool. We are screaming the engine on this thing. They're set to do some work on the alligator bridge and uh, we're about a mile and a half away. We got this thing wide open on the turbo, which we're trying to stay away from if we can, because it gets hot and it's hot outside and the water temperature's hot. Like it's just all bad news. Yeah, better, thank you. We're, we're pinning it and the lady's like, there's nothing I can do. If you get here in time and the workers that aren't here yet, I'll open the bridge. But uh, if they're here to do the work on the bridge, you guys are stuck till they're done the work. And we're like, no. And we got up early this morning to make to some time. all of this, and oh. now we might be stuck for a couple hours at the bridge. Which really sucks. So we got this thing pinned. We're doing seven and a half to eight knots right now. And uh, she just let one batch of boats through and we'll see how it goes. We got four minutes till one and that's when the workers are supposed to be there. So we're hoping that they're late. Yeah, and she lets us through. Poured some coal out of the back of this thing that hasn't done that in a while. My heart's beating like a jackrabbit. <laughs> She's opening up the bridge for us. Keep it on the gas. Keep on the gas. For a little bit. Anyway, um, we're getting there. She just said, yeah, I'm going to start the process. I'm going to open it up and let you through. So, oh, we made it. Woo, here she goes. Everywhere. <laughs> weird you, you clear a room I'm like clear and then I come in and all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of them over there <laughs> makes no sense no sense get them baby oh these things are terrible can you imagine what the outside of a boat looks like I don't even want to think about it right now oh. 
We thought last night was bad, but this is gross. Look at the bimini, it is covered. And then if you turn around and you look in the enclosure, they're just everywhere. It's covered. And their poop is ever everything. It's just sticky and black. It looks like there was a fire last night and there's ash on everything. The dinghy is black? Oh, yuck. Oh, they're swarming, baby. You got them pissed off now. I'm going inside. Save yourself. Oh my God, gross. We're just gonna have to leave. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so dirty. Ugh. Oh, yeah. This turns green. Mm -hmm. I know I took a bucket of seawater and dumped it on the floor in the back on the trampoline. Yeah. And it's turning a big green. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, our cushion edge is green now. Expecting to do this morning. No kidding. Last night we were hanging out and uh, we had the companionway door open, all of a sudden they noticed there were a ton of flies, like thousands. So we closed it up and hit That's it all with the vacuum and just expected that we'd be having a bunch here in the morning. But not only did we have a bunch, but it came with tons of their uh, poop. poop excrement from the bugs. And uh, it is crazy. Absolutely crazy. We're doing a quick blast through because we got a schedule to meet too, but for the day, but you can see it's turning everything green. It's just covered. Like the dinghy in the back here, it's crazy. I don't know if you can see all this in the camera, but it's it's a nightmare. This thing needs a full power wash now. <laughs> it's I can't get over it. Look at the dinghy. Look inside. There's eight million bugs in there. Up in the bimini top. So we're trying to get the cockpit sort of wiped out so we can actually get going and then while one of us is driving the other one will be cleaning. We have been infested with mayflies. We were told that they were bad in this area but our boat is now covered in them. And thank God we closed the windows before and we just had the screen ones open. This is disgusting. Ew. Mayflies do not bite, they have no mouths, and they do not sting. They emerge from the water only to reproduce and die soon after mating. You do not want to hose them down under any circumstances. Wet mayflies smell worse than dead rotting fish in the summer sun. So keep your lights off at night and they'll be gone soon enough. interesting morning. It started off with a boatload of mayflies and, and black greasy poo all over our whole boat. It was horrible. So had horrible. to take the entire morning to clean the boat before the sun came out so it didn't bake on. There's some areas that are going to take a lot of buffing and polishing that we obviously didn't get enough wax on um, that it stuck to it and it stained quite bad but that got finished. And then we are in the land of bridges again. And they're all very close bridges that only open on the hour. So you have to really slow it down so you can get from one to the next. And then they throw a half an hour one in there just to mix you up, which is tons of fun. But it's been a very fun and interesting day. And then we get to go through a lock today for the first time, which is gonna be really, really cool. But Yeah, fun stuff. <laughs> Baby, you don't look like you're having any fun. I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, we hit a stump earlier too, and I, oh, we felt it hard. I'm not, not happy about that at all. No. There's so many deadheads in here, and it's like a, a, looking at our list of bridges for two seconds, and all of a sudden. Yeah. But we're
we're into Virginia now and uh, the scenery is really quite beautiful. 